everybody. Uh, this is Dr. Vindya Pai and today I'm going to talk to you all about a very common condition which I see in my practice every single day and that's melasma. So uh, uh, this condition is uh, actually a facial pigmentation that occurs in women and men of uh, probably uh, the middle age group, like probably 30 to 50 age group is uh, the age group in which this condition arises. This condition has different causes. Number one and number one cause is genetics. So if at all someone in your family is having this problem of uh, facial pigmentation, then you will invariably have it. So the second important cause other than genetics is UV light. Especially in a high UV index place like ours, um, even a short duration of exposure to sunlight can actually trigger a melasma. So basically genetics and exposure to sunlight are the two important causes of melasma. The third important cause is actually hormonal disturbances. So uh, especially post-pregnancy or during the menopausal age group is when this problem arises and also if you're on oral contraceptive pills you can get this problem. So uh, what does this look like? This is actually a map-like pigmentation which occurs on the face and it's usually on the cheeks and the forehead but it can also come in the nose and the upper lips as well. Uh, the good news is that this uh, condition can be improved remarkably with the help of lasers. But the not so good news is that it cannot be completely erased. So whatever we do with the best of the creams and the best of the lasers, we can improve it dramatically by around 80%, but it can never ever go away. And you need to have a strict home regimen in the form of sunscreen, skin brightening creams, and other um, oral pills, which I'll be talking about, uh, which you need to uh, consume so that you know, uh, uh, this uh, pigmentation will be very much uh, at control. So how do we treat this problem? Uh, so basically, uh, whenever a client of melasma walks into my clinic, uh, the, the number one step is I try to ask them as much history as possible. Like, uh, do they have any hormonal problem? Do they have any stress issue? or uh, what is their lifestyle like? Are they outdoors all the time? Are they apply applying proper sunscreens? And things like that. And the second important step is I teach them how to apply a sunscreen because most of the time uh, they say they're applying it, but uh, they, you know, they take a very little amount and they do not spread it evenly on the face and they do not apply to all areas on the face. So that's very important. Another important thing is uh, reapplication of sunscreen. So if they apply it in the morning, they have to reapply once again in the afternoon and towards evening also, especially if the UV index in your place is too high. So now that's what I educate them about. That's number one. And the second step is I also talk to them about laser therapy because this is by far the easiest, the fastest, and uh, the most effective way of uh, uh, improving your melasma. So the, uh, the laser which I use in my clinic is known as the Resurfex from Luminous and also the Revlite. So what I do is I do a combination of Resurfex and Revlite at very low intensity uh, to halt the inflammation, to prevent the uh, production of pigments and to give the skin a much more rejuvenated look. So I tell them to do around three to four treatments at a span of maybe 15 days each. And um, usually there is no downtime. They do not have uh, any redness um, or any swelling. At times there might be some redness and swelling probably for about half a day of, after the treatment, but that's it. That's the only uh, short downtime you'll have. So after this, you know, they'll have to apply strict sunscreens, a skin brightening cream, uh, and um, they, are, they can carry out their normal routine. Uh, it's not a problem. And they will see the improved effect on their skin, the rejuvenated look on their skin, probably day two or day three after the treatment. So like this, we follow around four to five treatments um, at a span of maybe 15 days uh, to 20 days gap. And um, apart from this, I also ask them to apply certain uh, skin brightening creams 
I'm not a big fan of triple combination creams like hydroquinone, hydrocortisone. Um, uh, I usually give them very safe uh, uh, creams which have arbutin um, and uh, other creams which actually improve the uh, look of the uh, skin as well as reduce the pigments and I also start them on oral tranexamic acid. So this actually really really helps uh, decrease pigment production and also gives a much brighter look in a span of just two months. So the other important uh, cream which I give is retinoic acid which I tell them to apply very little on probably alternate days. Uh, and uh, that also helps for the exfoliation of the skin and um, it really helps with the look. Another important question which you might ask me is what about using glycolic acid peels, TCA peels and so on. So my answer to this is it's a wonderful treatment provided it's done in the right strength because sometimes too aggressive glycolic acid and TCA treatments can actually trigger a melasma. So normally what I do is I go with very low strength of glycolic and TCA and I uh, have a combination of these treatments with my favorite laser treatments because that gives a much, much, much better uh, improvement to the skin and it really does it with no downtime. That's the most beautiful part because no one wants to have a downtime after a procedure and especially when you're already having melasma, you're already frustrated. You don't want your skin condition to look more darker even for a day. So that's the uh, reason I normally do very, very superficial non-ablative procedures at a very low intensity. And I sometimes uh, rotate these treatments with a very low glycolic acid peel or a very low strength uh, TCA peel uh, because that really helps to uh, exfoliate the skin, to rejuvenate the skin, to decrease the pigment production. And overall, the brightness of the skin really improves with all these treatments. So nevertheless, um, home regimen is extremely important. So sunscreens uh, to be used day in and day out, morning and afternoon and towards the evening too. And if you have the habit of um, staying indoors all the time and in front of your screen like a laptop or a computer, you still have to put sunscreens because uh, it's, n it's nothing but visible light which is affecting your face and that can again trigger a melasma. So you know, basically sunscreen usage is number one form of treatment. The second important form of treatment is laser therapy and uh, the skin brightening creams also form a very important stay of treatment uh, because home regimen as I always say is extremely extremely uh, required it's not only the blazers and our in-office procedures which will help it's also uh, the it's uh, also how you take care of yourself of your skin at home the important thing which I would like to discuss is stress Stress actually triggers melasma. So if you're not sleeping right, or if you're not eating right, if you're emotionally stressed, it triggers the stress hormones in you, and that again triggers melasma. So whenever, um, I always tell my clients that once you achieve a remarkably good uh, improvement in your melasma, don't just put up sunscreen and walk out. You have to camouflage it with a little makeup on it, because you know when you walk into an office or a function and somebody asks you uh, oh you have this pigment on your face aren't you doing anything about it so that it itself triggers uh, the stress levels in you so basically camouflaging is not only as a uh, treatment for uh, you know uh, looking good or to hide your pigmentation it's also to decrease stress levels in you and it, it's also to decrease the incidence of melasma because as we all know stress itself triggers melasma and it's one of the most important factors so you have to uh, play with your makeup kits and try to hide it uh, once you get a good uh, improvement of your skin because I al already said that melasma cannot be erased it can only be improved so um, uh, this is my take home message for you all that melasma is a very common condition it is um, uh, having genetics as its number one cause and um, uh, of course environmental exposure and hormonal ups and downs are also another important trigger and uh, the treatment of choice is for me 
I'm very comfortable with using lasers, so I normally uh, do very low dose of or very low intensity of a combination of lasers. And at times, looking at the skin condition, skin type, whether it is sensitive or not, I also introduce a combination of glycolic and TCA and low strength peels. So this is my uh, way of treating melasma and I usually get very good improvement and uh, people are generally very happy uh, with the treatments. So this was all about melasma for you all. This is Dr. Vindya Pai signing off. Thank you.